wee pinchers and to always be looking over our back at the manky mob and judging ourselves on name when the world is a bigger place and if we if we go into Europe having no fear and having the Jock Steen spirit of right, we might be smaller than the rest, but if we do things right in the proper way, we can beat these big guys and we can win the big cup again by doing it the right way, but and having the belief and having the balls and the imagination, but that that's that's the same to me the Celtic way is a boardroom or temporary custodians who are just happy to shoot ourselves in the foot when we should be doing better. Mm. Well, the results speak for themselves and, and it certainly backs up, you know, what you're saying. And it's it's incredibly disappointing. You know, 'cause we, we, we can we we the supporters have the imagination to dream these these dreams and, and, and you know, we have the logic that can make this happen. And for whatever reason, you know, it's just not followed through on. They, they miss they miss so much tricks, really. It's beyond belief because, I mean, if if you're getting sixty thousand ten years ago, and you're only getting forty thousand now, where is your answer? You've mm-hmm. turned off twenty thousand people in ten years. Whatever you have done in that ten years, you've turned twenty thousand people away. And in any business sense, they shouldn't be paying a chief executive a million pound when 20,000 people, when one third of your fan base has deserted the, your core. I mean, if you only get 60,000 for three games, when 10 years ago you used to get 60,000 for 18, you know, that, that, that chairman should be on a reduced wage package because for all intents and purposes... He's failed, really, isn't he? Well, you know, I, I, no question about it. I mean, you know, we can point to the state of the economy right now, which is absolutely bleak. You know, no question about that. But you know, the the larger point that's really been raised as of lately by the Celtic Trust, you know, and the good work that they do, is the the fact that we still have employees that are not paid a living wage, in spite of the fact that you know our Board members and and you know specifically Peter Lowell is on a million a year. So you have you have millionaires on the board. Actually, you have billionaires, billionaires with a B on the board, who, when presented with a resolution to pay, guaranteed that all Celtic employees are going to be paid a living wage, seven pounds forty an hour. They said it's not feasible at the moment because we want we won't have enough financial flexibility. That's an absolute disgrace. That millionaires. And billionaires, and specifically, a, a, an employee of the club, the CEO, Peter Lowell, is on a million pounds. That's the salary that he takes from the club. I mean, what exactly is he doing for the club that would merit him taking home a million pounds? And then to have the balls, to have the audacity to say that we don't have the financial flexibility to pay people who work for the club a living wage? This is a man who has a heated driveway. He... He has artificially heated concrete on his driveway. That's the type of, of uh, eloquence that, that you know we're dealing with here. The opulence that that you know that 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 he endures. You get back to to what you were talking about about the Celtic way, and there's the Celtic way on the park, and there's also the Celtic way off the park. You mean to tell me that's the Celtic way off the park? That's that's part of Brother Walford's mission, part of Brother Walford's dream. What he created, I'm sorry, it's an absolute disgrace. It's a slap in the face to, to what Brother Walford stood for, to why he started Celtic Football Club. And, and those on the board who you know, claim that it's not feasible to pay employees a living wage are a disgrace. They should be ashamed. No, it seems to me that when I, was say, I, I hear what you're saying, <coughs> and apart from just a two-year period when Celtic fans exercise the ghost of the last temporary custodians but that flexing of the muscle by Celtic fans is needed just now more than ever right because just now we might not be at the same level of what the Mankey mob are and we might not be at the same levels we were 18 years ago at almost at death's door but everything is relative and if people are defending or want to be defenders of someone who's taking a million pound. If people want to defend someone who's got no balls, imagination, 
are, are, are basically now and, and someone who's lost a third of the customer base in the time that he's been in charge. And that decline began before there was any word of recession. That decline began when Alan Greenspan, and we'll, we'll move on, and we're going to bring Rocky in in a few minutes, that's all right, G, we'll move on and talk all about things about the fiduciary issue and money. But the decline in Celtic's numbers going through the turnstiles was still at the time when Alan, Alan Greenspan was giving out free money and when uh, the, 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 the mad bastard in the Bank of England was giving out free money with, with Gordon Brown issuing all the, the free notes, you know. So the decline of Celtic began many moons ago and it began under the watch of Peter Lawwell and it seems to me that, you know, the consecutive Celtic boards, apart from the time when just for a few years we spent money uh, when, when, when Martin O'Neill came, Apart from that, every other season and every 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 season under Celtic regimes of Fergus McCann, the old board, and now under the Peter Lawwell totalitarian state, right, we'll call it the Peter Lawwell totalitarian state, under each of them and every one of them, they have failed the Celtic fans in representation, i.e., the ordinary fan in the street, his views are not being recognised, are taken into consideration by the board. Our idea of what we want on the pitch and what we want off it has never been listened to, never been taken into account. So we are just being dismissed as cannon fodder. You know, and at least under the, bo the old regime and board, we were fans and we had an inclination that is our club, but now by calling us customers and consumers. It's led to the disenfranchising of people like myself and people who would love to go but can't even afford to go. So what you've now has got a club that's been stolen from its root core where people can no longer afford to go or people like myself who, yeah, I could maybe afford to go more than what I do but I chose not to because I feel sick and scunnered by the people who are running it and the, the way it's been led. And this is just, it's, it's no good in the hood. To, and this this AGM can't come quick enough and I'm ready to go there and put my point there and put my case across and stand up and be counted. And I'm calling for every other Celtic fan out there who's got the, if they can't make it, to let me go and vote on behalf of us all or get along there and make her voice be heard because unless people are prepared to go there and stand up and shout them down then all we're going to get at that AGM is people who are just going to be yes men and are going to be planted there to say this and that so we have to be there to go there and shout it down and say a piece and I'm ready to go in there and do my bit to fucking challenge these bastards once and for all because it's fucking wrong what they're doing G it's totally wrong and we need, to, we need to keep the pressure up because they're helping... And the biggest crime, I think, G, right? I'll let you in here, sorry, bro. The biggest crime, I think, is how they're allowing us as a Celtic community to be criminalised by the police state that they're doing now. How they're allowing this to happen, this is the biggest crime as far as I'm concerned. That, the living wage, and fucking letting the man came off. I don't know what come is, but for me... For them to allow them to criminalise us for singing songs and no standing up. This is a huge issue that we have to address also, you know. Hey, man, bro. I mean, you know, <clears throat> as you are accurately pointing out, you know, they have not just <laughs> just standing idly by, but they, they've been a big part in vilifying uh, a very key element of our support, the Green Brigade. You know, and they, they've taken every opportunity they, they have had you know, to vilify them and to, to turn the support against them. And, uh, you know, the, the heavy policing that's being, being directed towards them at the moment. And, and let's not, let's not kid ourselves here. You know, we're seeing, we saw seven Celtic supporters arrested today for singing the role of honor. You know, they're painting this broad brush as if everybody that attends away games is part of the green brigade, you know, as a, uh, you know, just has this lust for pyro and, you know, are these Provo wannabes who, you know, are, are a detriment to society. And it's absolute nonsense. You know, you're seeing, you know, just, just innocent people that are at games who, who didn't sing a note 
of any song. You know, getting picked out by the the polis. You know, at, at that point. You know, and and you know that they the the, the the reward they get is a weekender. You know, for for you know being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Police pull them up. They say you were singing about the IRA. So no, I wasn't. Well, they have no defense or recourse at that point. You know, the, <laughs> we're we're basically at the mercy of. Uh, you know the, the the whims of, I mean, just corrupt police. And and what our what does our club do? Absolutely nothing. You know, their silence in the aftermath of the Kettling incident last year was it's just I mean, it's appalling. You know, they don't have our back. They they have their they they have the back of the balance sheet. And, and until anything affects the balance sheet, they they really couldn't even give it to us. And and that's the sad thing. Well, listen, mate, I'm going to get Rocky on because I'm, I feel guilty. So we're going to get the Rocky boy on. He's, yeah, he's let's get Rocky. Yeah. Hold on. We've been talking away about football. It's good to talk about the football, but hold on, Rocky, get him on as well. Stay there. Oh, this is Rocco de Taglia. I am <laughs> Rocco de Taglia. No, no, we'll try him again. We'll try him again. Stay there. You guys are funny when you do American accents. Yo, Rocky. It's Adrian. <laughs> Adrian, Rocky. <coughs> Come back, Rocky. Ah, fuck it. We'll leave it on there. We'll get... We'll f Hold on, I'll put a message on there. We'll get him back on that one. Yeah, G. Yeah. So, uh, what were we saying there? Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, the, the board... I, I, I've never... I mean, even although... Even although we've achieved so much in Celtic in the last few years, we've seen the demise and it's been so much fun to see their demise right and and uh, I just can't help thinking how I mean we should have really been ramming it the, the trophy count down their throat you now I mean okay mm -hmm. it's okay we're going to win league after league right but we, we should have been doing treble after treble you know we shouldn't be dropping these it's like you know, you've got to be ruthless. If you play a game of cards, I mean, I don't play cards for money, but you know, when the old saying is, you don't leave your, you don't leave any money on the table. If you're going there, if you're playing a game, you just want to clean up everything. You've got to be ruthless, you know. And when Rangers, when they were, you know, spending the brown envelopes before the EBTs and Murray was spending money, as God willing, I'm, I'm looking forward to the asterisk years and what Paul Larkin's got in this wonderful book on how they, they managed to accumulate all their wealth and how the, 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 the crooked way they've done it, you know. But while they were doing that and we were at their mercy, they were ramming home treble after treble. They were merciless about it. And I know I don't want us to be the same way in the sense of, you know, win at all costs and do it all. And I don't mind us losing the odd game or losing the cup here or there, but it, it's... it's sheer negligence for Celtic to not have won a treble in the last two years, three years, you know, the last three years of trying, you know, when Rangers have been crippled and have had nothing, so we can't do it this season, we missed an opportunity last season, we missed an opportunity the year before, we missed the opportunity, the last four seasons, trebles were there waiting for us, and they don't come along often, and we're just passing them up, and I mean, it might, in the grand scheme of things, it what does it matter? It doesn't mean fucking nothing. The fact that, you know, as long as we win the, the, the league and then we get into the Champions League and we sit at the fine table, maybe that's what the board, they're happy for that. But honest to goodness, as a Celtic fan, you're wanting the best and we, we should be going to Hamden and cleaning up. I mean, beating Kilmarnock, it's a given. We should have done it. Beating St Mirren, we should have done it. Beating Hearts, it should have been there. And then boom, 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 cup, cup, cup. 